So this class, this video is about the V4 lithium system and you guys are probably wondering why does this have to be so complicated? Why is there all these wires everywhere? Why can't I just stick the batteries in the rig and call it good like I do with AGM batteries? And the reason has to do with the uh, voltage discharge curve of the difference between uh, lithium batteries and AGM batteries. With AGM batteries, you can go from about 50 to 100%. That's the purple lines. And with lithium batteries, you can go from about 20 to 100%, the purple lines there. But notice the green lines that show the voltage change as you go from 50 to 100% and 20 to 100%. With the AGM batteries, there's a big gap there. And with the lithium batteries, it's just a tiny gap. So for most of the cycle of a lithium battery, it stays at the same voltage, which makes it very complicated to manage to keep the battery from getting overcharged or over discharged. Whereas with an AGM battery, there's a lot more uh, variability. So it's really easy to have devices in there like inverters that automatically shut off when the AGM batteries reach a certain voltage or whatever, or uh, battery protects that shut off the DC loads when it reaches a certain voltage, and it only reaches this certain high voltage and just, it doesn't spike up like it does with lithium batteries. It reaches it and then kinda, it's not as a dramatic spike that could damage the batteries like it is with lithium batteries. So with lithium batteries, you have to have a battery management system in there that's a much more complex way of monitoring the battery voltage to tell when the battery's too overcharged or over discharged. And in the Victron lithium batteries, they have a built-in battery management system that sends data through an M8 cable to the VE bus BMS. And do we have one of those here that I can just grab? Yes. Bob. Okay. So this is the VE bus BMS. It gets data through M8 cables to these ports right here. And the battery's internal BMS communicates to the VE bus uh, a signal that's CD, which means charge disconnect, which means the voltage is getting too high, or LD, which is low disconnect, meaning the voltage is getting too low, or too hot, if the battery's just overheating, then it does CD and LD, disconnects both the loads and the charging sources. And the output of the VE bus BMS is a CD LD signal, and we send that directly into our V4 board, which then processes that along with we have a temperature sensor going from the lithium battery to the V4 board because you can't charge a lithium battery when a lithium battery is freezing or else it will damage it. So the V4 board takes all these inputs, temperature, charge disconnect, load disconnect, and then sends signals out to all these other components telling your system what to do, like uh, DC loads. Um, we have a BP100 in line of our DC loads and if you're over discharging something, uh, it needs to be told, hey, disconnect. So if, the, if it's over discharged, your lithium battery will send the CD signal to the VE bus BMS, and the VE bus BMS will send that to the V4 board, and then the V4 board will disconnect this BP100 so that this positive line here going to your DC loads is disconnected so that they're not drawing any more current. Um, it will also disconnect if the battery gets too hot. Uh, next, we have solar, and it goes into the battery rather than this going out, so the BP100 orientation is reversed. And uh, solar is a charging source, so this disconnects when uh, there's the LD signal, I mean the, the CD signal, charging disconnect, and it disconnects when the batteries are freezing, and that's all calculated by the V4 board. And then next we have the alternator, and that um, is similar to the solar and how it disconnects. If the battery voltage is too high and you have um, you know, a charge disconnect signal, or if the battery's freezing, it will disconnect. And we added a couple other features into our V4 board that this only connects when you have the ignition on 
uh, because we don't want to draw power from the system closing this relay if you're not even using an alternator. So it only connects when the ignition is on and there's a 20 second delay just to get everything initialized in your rig before it starts charging your system. And then for the inverter charger, this one's a little bit more complicated because the inverter portion of it draws power from the positive and the negative here, and the charger portion puts power on those same two nodes, the positive and the negative. So we have, on the Victron inverters, we can go in and tweak some of the programming on how it views what's going on through the T-Sense port. So the T-Sense port of the inverter connects to the V4 board, and the V4 board sends a signal to that T-Sense when the batteries are frozen, or when they're too hot, or when the voltage is too high, and that disconnects the charger portion. So you can still discharge, you can still have inverter power, AC power, but it won't let you charge anything. And as far as we know, only Victron inverters have that feature. And then finally, um, when you wanna measure the charge level that you have in a lithium battery bank, uh, you can see that there's, there's no real difference. You can't measure the charge level by voltage with these like you can sometimes with AGM batteries. So the only way to do that is with a shunt-based monitoring system, and the Lynx shunt attaches directly to the Lynx distributor, which uh, uses a, like a mathematical algorithm to calculate all the current in, all the current out, and figure out you know, your battery capacity and how much you have left. So that pretty much sums it up. Any questions? wanted to make another note about our V4 board's capabilities enabling boost. Oh, that's a good point. So uh, we have a boost feature on the control board, which you would use if your starter battery was dead. You push a boost button. It bypasses the starter battery and sends current through this alternator thing to turn your ignition uh, by the lithium batteries rather than your starter battery. Anything else? You guys experts on this now? <laughs> Absolutely. Good. The other thing I wanted to make note is what makes these systems much more complicated is that we actually have to separate loads from charging sources and often, oftentimes in our applications those are combined somewhere and we have to bind it and separate it. Yeah. And that's what causes that labor basically. And you see the red arrows, the red pointing in is a charging source, out is a load in charging source, in and out, that's the inverter charger. That's why we have to do the complicated T-Sense connection there. You're talking about for the class A's that have combined? Well, pretty much any RV, somewhere in the system before it meets their house battery, they've brought in loads and charging sources. So the alternator's coming through or the generator's pulling mm -hmm. through that same cable. Mm -hmm. And that's when we need to figure out where that comes in and separate them. Um, or the DC load is coming through the same cable. So that's part of the trick. So ultimately what you have is a load relay disconnect and a charge relay disconnect capability once you separate it. Yep. And you don't have to use the link shunt. This is just a nice clean way to Yeah, the link shunt that. is nice because it just attaches right to the links. Uh, the downside is that you have to have a color control monitor if you're using it. And uh, the BMV 702, would uh, or 712 would do the same thing it just interrupts this line right here and if you wanted that with the Bluetooth monitoring then you would use that yeah and on that note um, the other difference between the link shunt and the BMV 712 in a disconnect scenario is that you don't get any information from your system if you have a link shunt you have to look at uh, maybe the Bluetooth cells through the battery yeah the app Whereas the 712, that remains the only device powered up that hasn't been cut out. So you can actually monitor it, what happened. Yeah. <clears throat> the BP100 and the EV, um, they're pretty much doing the same job. Why don't we use a BP for an alternator? Why, why do we swap out the EV? Uh, the BP100s are MOSFETs instead of relays. Oh, okay. So current can only flow in one direction. If you use the BP100 on the alternator charge, it would do alternator charge uh -huh. fine, but it wouldn't do a boost back the other direction. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. you need, you need a boost. 
yeah. with, the B, with that feature. That's why. Yeah. That's a good question, Wilson. And the BP 100s are sized according to load and charging capability. Generally, the BP 100 on the solar would never exceed 100 amp because we don't do solar that's larger than 100 amp. Mm -hmm. But the load can be higher than 100 amp, and that's why we have BP 220s. Oh. Or if the load is pretty small, we have a BP 65. Perfect. Yeah. And if you had um, a standalone inverter rather than the multi plus inverter charger, your standalone inverter would connect on the DC loads here. And say you had like a 1200 watt um, inverter, it would go here, and all your DC loads, this one would probably be a, a BP 220 instead of a BP 100. And part of the the greatness, I would say, of Victron's inverters being able to be custom programmed internally to be regulated for charging versus load. You don't get that with like a Magnum. So a Magnum, if it loses DC, it's lights out. You get no load capability, get no charge capability, get no pass-through capability, so it's basically you're in the dark. Yeah, or another option with the Magnum is you just bypass the cold disconnect and uh, it can charge your batteries when they're freezing, but the only reason it would be charging your batteries was if, if, if you were tied to shore power, which if you're tied to shore power, you're not gonna let your RV get below freezing or you're gonna have bigger issues with your plumbing. So it's not, not totally problematic if you have to use a magnum inverter because the chances of you doing a cold charge with a magnum inverter are pretty much zero anyway. Does that make sense? All right, when somebody calls up, perfect. We're done. <laughs>